All right, so here I have a uh, 1983 Herco KM3. Uh, this has been retrofitted with a Linux CNC controller. I've reused all of the factory servo motors. However, um, due to how the wiring worked out, we ended up ditching the, uh, the factory encoders uh, and switching them to uh, 24 volt capable uh, encoders, shaft encoders from US Digital. Um, and I'll also put in a picture of this one in particular right here. Um, and so after doing all of that uh, and getting all of the encoders set up correctly, uh, we were able to get this cut in actually quite nice. I'll throw in a uh, quick little clip of it cutting right here. So one of the other large biggest challenges was figuring out the limit switches on this machine. Um, so the factory ones utilize these octo-amp couplers right here so that essentially it can provide the controller a 24 volt on or off, so 0 to 24 volts, but only give 4 volts to um, the... Uh, limit switch. Uh, so we actually just ditched. So the 24 volts is actually going to the uh, Mesa 7i77 uh, board here. And this, uh, so the factory limit switches were also wired to the drives. And so whenever you'd hit a limit switch, it would disable the drive in that direction. So in order to just make everything work, that's been completely removed. So the 7i77 is managing the limit switches entirely. Um, because with how the logic of Linux CNC works, doing, trying to utilize the uh, um, like drive disables um, on how it was set up from the factory would not really work uh, because you're going to get following errors all the time um, so just getting rid of that completely uh, this board is still in here but these wires just aren't going anywhere I just haven't removed haven't removed that yet um, but yeah aside from that so utilizing another relay board here so that you can run higher current draw outputs than what the board will run so the board controls these relays which then control more relays uh, so these ones up here are all of the ones for things like flood coolant, mist coolant, the drive enables, um, spindle motor direction. Uh, one of the issues that I currently have is that I can't get it to run the spindle backwards because um, Linux CNC only allows you to have one relay on at a time. Uh, so if you command spindle forward um, it's actually one relay but on this machine if you want to command it to go the reverse direction it's enable reverse and then turn the spindle on so trying to enable those two outputs at the same time I'm pretty sure is possible but you have to go and manually edit the uh, HAL file for your Linux CNC setup um, which you know, for me, I'm mostly doing stuff of, you know, with carbide end mills these days. And so trying to use the uh, reverse, which would only really be used for when you put it in low range, is kind of pointless. Most of the time, you know, you can run it. You're, you're trying, this machine doesn't spin, you know, spindle fast enough most of the time anyway. So, um, yeah. So, really not a big issue but aside from that everything else works the flood coolant works um, all the relays work um, and we had to ditch the there was an old power supply in here um, the whole reason why I 
started this whole journey in the first place was because the uh, 24-volt power supply failed. Um, and so when we went to go do that, we just assumed the computer died. Um, but then after we got to poking and prodding, we found out it was actually the power supply. But at that point, we were already too far down the road of trying to save the factory controller. So we just gutted all of it and started over. Uh, but I mean, most of the wiring is pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the things that you do need to pay attention to is the limit switch. The limit switches get fed uh, the same voltage as the encoders and they splice the wires in the motor cables. So we ended up having a bad limit switch so I bought some 24 volt ones and we gave 24 volts to the limit switches which then burnt out the encoders because those were only rated for 5 volts uh, which then just forced me to get 24 volt encoders uh, which were actually super nice. They're only about $100 or so each um, and you give them 24 volts and they still output 5 because it is important to note that the Mesa board only is capable of receiving plus uh, you know, plus five volt encoder output. Uh, so if you give it, you know, zero to 24 volt encoder output, which I'm not even sure if that's a thing, but uh, it, it'll fry the board. So, um, yeah. So in terms of cable management, though, uh, there's a little bit to be desired at the moment, but I've got an old Dell workstation that I got for like 10 bucks uh, running Linux CNC Ubuntu whatever you want to call it uh, not super well versed on that I barely know it enough to get it working um, but yeah so feeding video and the 7i77 cables through the back sheet metal um, you know just kind of have that running up through here and then in terms of power so we've just got an extension cord for the monitor and then the DVI-D cable running through the factory uh, arm. So it all comes up through here um, in, a, in you know, a factory condition. And so I made this little mount here. Cables come up through here. Um, and honestly, it's a super clean install. I really like it. Uh, I also got rid of the stoppers so that you can actually spin this, you know, uh, further than you can from the factory um, and that's awesome you can't spin it round and round though because it'll just wrap up the cables but it's good enough for going back and forth um, and so then after that in terms of IO eventually I want to get like an actual jog pendant because I'm not a huge fan of the keyboard um, as the only way to interact with the machine so if you need to actually e-stop it there's no physical button for that so definitely need to get that checked out and figured out and installed because i've already had one incident where the computer froze and was still telling the motors to drive and i caught it before it crashed um, by just killing the entire machine power uh, but yeah, so wireless keyboard and mouse so that I don't have to run cables through that. So the only cables going through this arm is power and DVI-D. Uh, but yeah, uh, on this side, you know, it's just shitty vice. Uh, but yeah, still same, same encoders uh, that I got from US Digital. And these were all, these covers, so the factory covers are just these aluminum ones these do not fit the u.s digital encoders uh, so through some finagling and careful installation you can 3d print some caps uh, and then kind of wiggle them on and get it so that everything's packaged really nicely so these are all still sealed units um, same with all of them the one problem it, for the Y-axis, though, is you can't use the same cover. So these ones, these bolts kind of line up, you know, the center line of these bolts line up with this edge. That does not work for this one because the uh, motor cable comes out in a different location. 
So this one is slightly canted. So the center line is here, and then this face is here. Um, this one's a bit of a pain to get on, but uh, not, not too terribly difficult. One of the other issues is uh, this x-axis motor cable, uh, it really stresses out the connection on here uh, for this just to be hold, holding on by the CPC. Uh, in fact, actually, this kind of worked loose before and actually burned out one of the motor, uh, motor lead uh, pins in the connector. So I had to repin that, replace the connector, uh, and then so I welded up, I welded up a bracket, uh, drilled some holes in the cabinet, and then zip tied this to it. So now this keeps it uh, a lot more stable than what it was. So you know the table can move around and not be stressing out that cable. Um, the location of the computer is kind of just chilling up here. Not really a huge fan of uh, it being up here because it's not secured and as you can see it's just going to eventually get covered in shit. So um, yeah. Uh, but coming on over to this side of the power cabinet. Um, these machines normally are three phase so uh, the only thing in this machine that actually is uh, three phase is the spindle motor uh, so to be able to run this on 220 single phase uh, I just have a VFD in here and then the rest of this just turns it into either you know 220 single phase or just 120 single phase uh, for even just the servo amps everything um, over on the other side is is all you know either DC or you know 120 or 220 volt single phase so not a lot going on on this side this is pretty factory except for this guy uh, but yeah everything everything on this machine works um, you know you can uh, come over to the console here and you know uh, all the the spindle brake and everything works uh, mist coolant the flood coolant which is the motor for flood coolant isn't there isn't one so there's just a relay in there that does nothing. Uh, but you know, you can power the machine on, um, home everything. You know, so it'll home. And uh, this machine actually runs pretty good, even though it's uh, it's it's quite quite cold in here right now. Um, it, it's still it's still running pretty good, uh, but yeah, everything um, you know everything uh, works like it should. You know, you can. I've found that this machine will actually jog. Well, it'll wrap it up to 400 inches per minute, which is what. I had it set to originally, um, but I was having some issues with uh, following error on the rapid whenever it was really above like 300 inches per minute. Um, and yeah, I'm never gonna, you can't cut that fast on a machine like this, anyways. Um, so, yeah, I'm not trying to make production parts with this. So I've just turned it down to a 250 inch per minute rapids. Which I mean is still faster than, which is still faster than most uh, bridge ports with a CNC retrofit, which is really what this is similar to. So, you know, I mean, this thing boot scoots and boogies uh, for being a close to 40 year old machine. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Honestly, not too difficult of a retrofit. There were some things in the wiring diagrams that were a bit uh, difficult to figure out, um, but mostly the documentation, which is you can find it online, uh, is pretty easy to follow to figure out how to you know make it all work. Uh, one of the next things I want to do in terms of upgrades is this spindle sucks. Uh, it uses these. Uh, proprietary these are like a, these are 30 taper ish 
uh, but it uses you know these drive dogs, which there's like this threaded collar, and the quarter turn. You kind of twist it. Um, I can show that here. Kind of twist it. Maybe not. Yeah, it was real tight, but kind of just twist it and then pop it out. Uh, and then that's how these tool holders are held in there. But you can't find these anymore. Um, they're whatever you can find is on eBay, and they and people want way too much money for them. You know, like maybe two holders for two hundred bucks, which is just highway robbery. Uh, so, um, shout out to another guy on YouTube. I saw he with his machine redid a couple of components in here uh and you can get a uh ntmb uh spindle which is basically it uses bt30 tool holders uh and you can put that spindle in here uh you'll have to make your own custom draw bar but the advantage to doing that is you can just have tons of tool holders they're you know small 30 taper ones um and you don't got to keep moving tools around in and out of holders, which, you know, if you're trying to do a program with a bunch of tools can be pretty obnoxious. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, ignore the, you know, this right here, if you're noticing that. That was nothing to do with the machine. Uh, that was just crappy high-speed steel tooling. This stuff is so not rigid uh this end mill is also not really all that sharp either and it's really long for high speed steel um so it was just it was just deflecting like crazy you can see that here um so i need to get some better carbide tooling here i don't have any carbide end mills that are quite this long um but i mean aside from that like you know you get into the smaller you know smaller features here uh let me get a light so we can see a little better. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see in there, maybe not super well, but uh, the the surface finish is pretty good, except for in this hole. I was having a hard time getting the chips out all the way, so it was kind of just cutting chips in that hole with that really long end mill. But um, overall, I mean, for a machine of this age, it cuts pretty good. The ball screws only have about a thou and a half of backlash in them, which... Uh, quite honestly, the tooling that we, <laughs> the machines we have at work are worse than this. Uh, so pretty, pretty nice to have a machine that's, you know, moderately capable. Um, probably the worst part though is uh, the spindle only having about five inches of travel. Um, so it can it can make doing things a little interesting if you're trying to you know use a drill chuck or something like that um so yeah aside from that though uh if you guys have any questions you know feel free to drop them down in the comments and i'll see what i can do to help out